What do we expect tonight? What will be a successful evening in your book? Well, you know, I, I talked to uh, Chris Matthews, your colleague, uh, yesterday. Chris Wallace. And, uh, uh, Chris Wallace, I'm sorry. Chris Wallace yesterday. And told him that in a way he's hitting cleanup. He's had the ability to see the, the other debates go forward before him, including the vice president, and to see what issues weren't covered, important issues in this campaign. And as you know, six has laid out, uh, Chris has laid out six general areas uh, which he's going to uh, you know, try to drill down on and make sure that these candidates uh, are not just talking about their own personalities or views of the other opponent's yeah. personality, but talk about the national debt, talk about immigration, talk about Social Security and other entitlements, talk about the Supreme Court. Uh, and so I think that's very, very important, and that's what I'm hoping we're going to see. Chris has said that uh, he feels like it'll be a success if, um, in a way, it's forgotten that he was the one moderating the debate because he wants mm -hmm. to sort of put those questions out there and get them talking to each other and revealing their positions on things in, in front of the audience. Do you agree that that's a good way for a moderator to perceive I to go at this? Yeah, we, we have always used the role of the moderator uh, in our debates as being a facilitator, a facilitator of discussion between the candidates. Now, I have to tell you, this series of debates has been the toughest job for the moderators that I, I think I've seen in the 30 debates or so that we've done because of the interruptions and, and the failure of one candidate to let the other complete a thought. So he's got a tough mm -hmm. job to do, uh, and, uh, but, you know, he's up to it, uh, and uh, we're really looking forward to seeing how no, things no go tonight. No question about that. You know, Frank, he said he will be a timekeeper and not a fact checker. What does well, that you know, mean our to view, you? Well, Bill, our thought is that this is a debate. This isn't an interview. There's a difference between uh, a, a journalist interviewing a candidate, asking them or him or her questions, and then following up. Here, it's a debate, and that means that if, if a candidate says something that's improper or incorrect, it's up to the other candidate to be the fact checker. Now, if, if they don't fact check and it's a really critical issue, well, then the moderator has a very difficult task, how to get through uh, and, and make sure that the public is getting the correct answer. But it's not to be someone to say, yes, you're right, candidate A, or you're wrong, candidate B. I know you're not in our business, but it is our business to try and figure out how many people will watch. What's your guess? Yep. Well, you know, the first, uh, the first debate, uh, we, we think it was well over 100 million. Uh, Nielsen said it was 84, 85, but, you know, that doesn't count C-SPAN. C-SPAN told me they had about 15 million. That gets you up to 99 million, and that doesn't count the people who are watching on their computers, on their iPads, on their iPhones, streaming, and so forth. And I think the second debate probably was up around 85 or 90. And so this one, uh, we're hopeful, is going to match those two debates and so that the American people, when they go to the polls, are going to know where the candidates stand on the issues. The issues are what are important. Whoever wins this race, whoever becomes the president, he or she has a tough job to try to bring this nation back together, to get Congress to work again together in the best interest of the American people. Yeah. So it's important You're that right the American that. people know where they stand. One last question for you. Why are they not sitting at a table? Well, we, we historically have had table sitting. So we feel actually that it's uh, in the best interest of debate. Sort of the podium stand as walls. You get a better discussion when they're seated at tables. But we'll listen to the candidates. If they don't want to sit at tables, they prefer to be at podiums. We have no problem with that. We work that around the edges. So long as the changes that they want don't really attack the integrity of the process mm -hmm. and get to what Why we're trying to accomplish in the debates. Do, do they both equally want to be at the podiums, or did one side want yes, the podium both, more than the other? No, both of them. Both of well, both of them agreed that they wanted podiums, so we said fine. The vice presidential debate, as you know, was seated at a table. Right. The, the, those candidates didn't care.